Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today what I'm going to be bringing you is a Swindon Town versus Bradford City match preview now just before we get into today's video if you could drop a like on it can we try and hit 60 likes on today's video that'd be massively appreciated subscribe if you are new this morning we hit 5,000 subscribers so thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed I want to take this moment to thank everyone that has supported me in the past will continue to, to support me in the future i do appreciate the support a lot over 5,000 people that is a crazy amount of people who are now subscribed to this channel so thank you so much to everybody who have subscribed if you haven't already subscribed make sure you do so it's free to do and it does massively help out the channel we're now on the road to 6,000 subscribers we're over halfway there to 10,000 now as well so thank you so much but make sure you drop a like subscribe get your post notification button as well unfortunately we're back only after a few days of that absolutely dreadful performance against Hartlepool to preview Saturday's match against Swindon Town so when I'm not looking forward to it, our next five games are against teams in very high places in the table firstly we've got Swindon there in third then we have Forest Green there currently top then we have Port Vale they're in fourth. Then we have Northampton. They're in sixth. And then after that, we have Tramia, who are currently in fifth. So it's definitely not going to be an easy run of fixtures. Now, we've had our easy run of fixtures, you could say, on paper uh, with the odd hard game here and there. But in terms of the league table, these next five games are going to be very, very hard. And it's a run of fixtures that I'm not looking forward to at all. But we are now going to get on with today's video. So make sure you drop a like on it subscribe all that sort of stuff but my team Bradford City where could they sat 12th in the Skybet League 2 table after 13 games we've got four wins five draws four defeats 17 goals scored 16 goals conceded leaving us on a positive one goal difference and 17 points Our last couple of games then have been a loss a draw a draw a, lo uh, a win and a loss that then compared it to Swindon Town they're currently sitting third in the Skybet League 2 table after 13 games we've got six wins five draws Two defeats, 18 goals scored, only 11 goals, uh, only 11 goals conceded, which is the second joint least in the whole league, leaving them on a positive seven goal difference and 23 points level on points with Harrogate Town. The last couple of games then being a win, a draw, a win, a win, and a draw. Them last couple of games then being a 2-1 win away to Sutton United, the 2-2 draw at home to Rochdale, a 3-1 win away to Plymouth in the Football League Trophy, a 2-0 win away to Forest Green Rovers, a 3-1 win away to. Bristol. Bristol Rovers, Bristol Rovers got a man sent off in that game, a 0-0 draw at home to Colchester, a 1-1 draw away to Northampton and a 2-1 defeat at home to Port Vale. So it looks like Swindon are one of these teams who are very good away from home but very poor at home so maybe potentially we could nick a win, fingers crossed Lee Angle will be back for this game, I don't think he will be but I've seen some rumours on Twitter that um, someone apparently spoke to him and he said he's hoping to be back for the Swindon game so who knows what that means he could be out for another two months we don't really know but the quicker Angle's back the better I don't think Angle's our lord and saviour I don't think he's going to come back into the side and suddenly we're the best team in the league you know I think he will improve us but yeah it's gonna it's just very difficult at the moment um with how we've been playing that performance on Tuesday I just can't get over how bad it was how met how poor so many players were I'm not going to do the starting 11 that I would go with against Swindon because quite frankly I couldn't really care less I won't be going to the game as I touched on in my previous couple of videos thank you very much for the support as well on the previous couple of videos uh, especially the Hartlepool vlog it's nearly at 4,000 views and nearly 150 likes as well at the time of recording so thank you so much to everybody who checked that out unfortunately we, we couldn't get the result but once again Hartlepool fans were absolutely class and I do instead of just talking about you know the team that I go with I just want to sp speak about the Stefan Rupp sort of situation so on Tuesday night obviously after the game I did my outro it was quite a long outro it was a bit of a, a bit of a rant it was four five minutes something like that um, I wasn't happy I went in on some individual players personally I went in on well not personally but because of how they played I went in on Stefan Rupp as well you know telling him that he's no longer wanted at Bradford City it's time to sell up and I do agree with that I've seen uh, you know a lot of people saying that as well on Twitter do I think Stefan Rupp is the whole problem no, I think partially everybody is to blame. As I mentioned, you know, it starts from the top. Stefan Rupp invests very, very little. That means Ryan Sparks and Derek Adams can't sign particularly great players. You know, we're signing players like, no disrespect again, Keelan Lavery, Theo Robinson, you know, these sort of players that other teams couldn't wait to get rid of, um, which means Derek Adams' squad isn't the greatest, so he has to pick some poor standard players. Then we get poor standard results. And it's great to see that everyone's kind of backing Adams because we all know from Adams' CV, he knows how to get out of this league. You know, we give him a, a proper, half, even a half decent squad, and Adam should be able to do something about it. But for whatever reason, it's just not working. So for me personally, I've seen rumours that Stefan Rupp wants to sell the club for about 10 million. 
when you have no assets, when you don't own the training ground, when you don't own the actual ground itself. In terms of our players, I mean, who's really got any value? Maybe Reece Staunton. Apart from that, I don't think anyone's too valuable. Potentially Vernon, but he's out of contract at the end of the season, so he could end up going for peanuts. So, fingers crossed that we get, you know, them sort of players tied down to longer deals like Vernon. I mean, Cook's been a bit poor recently, but, you know, I think he deserves a new deal. Levi Sutton, I think he's the one that should get a new deal. Paul D O'Connor as well. So, for me personally, I think Stefan should sell the club, but... You know, at the end of the day, we, we want better, but what if we get worse? But I think that's a gamble we've got to take because right now under Stefan Rupp, we're not proceeding, we're not going anywhere. Um, it just like we, we've been going backwards pretty much ever since he came in, and we've changed pretty much everything since. Um, obviously the season we got relegated apart from owner and we've just gone backwards completely so fingers crossed he wakes up and he sells the club you know he has no interest in football he's already said previously that you know he has completely no interest in Bradford City he, he pays his way you know he, everybody's paid on time the players you know he keeps the lights on he does the bare minimum but for me personally it's just we want some actual investment like we don't like that crankshaw money i don't know how much the money was say for example it was 50,000 are we going to see that money reinvested in january Probably not, to be honest. As of right now and after the window that we had in the summer, I have no real confidence that we're going to be aggressive in the transfer window. And once again, we're relying on an insane January transfer window to save our season. And people keep saying, oh, we're going to do a Bolton. But Bolton signed loads of players in January. They have budget available. We've already wasted all of our budget on players like Keelan Lavery, Theo Robinson. I don't just want to single them two out because we've also given a two-year deal to Alex Gilead. Who else have we wasted money on? I mean, Lee Angle as well, you know, he's done well to start with, but he's been injured for the past two, two and a half months. You know, he could even be three months for an injury. That, that's all that wage, all that money that we're spending. And we knew we were going to be, you know, he's injury prone. He's That's the track record that he's had in his career. And don't get me wrong, I like Lee Angle, but if we're signing injury prone players, it just kind of seems a bit of a waste of money, to be honest. I think whichever way that you do look at it, it's just disappointing at the moment. You know, everyone's really frustrated after the performances. Whenever we should win a game, we draw it. And whenever we're whenever we should lose a game we lose it we're not really balancing it out to be honest with you i think the only reason why we as i touched on it previously the only reason why we beat rochdale and, and um drew to newport was because of how poor they were rather than because we were amazing you know, i thought we were all right against rochdale i don't think we were particularly outstanding like in something that also is really confusing is Derek adams in his post-match interviews I'm, i keep going on like little tangents here but i have so much to get out so quickly that i'm just kind of going on little tangents which i do apologize about but Derek adams keeps going on uh, going on about and alluding to this problem i don't really know what he means but he, he feels like it's not his place to say ryan spikes did a tweet yesterday um about the hartlepool game and all, pretty much well not pretty much all but a lot of the comments were asking what is this problem that Derek adams keeps alluding to because we want to know as fans you know we're the ones that we've paid our extra money for season tickets this year we're not seeing any of that money really reinvested you know we've got some new shiny dugout and we've got some new seats which let's be honest they're not the comfiest are they so it's just a bit disappointing the way that the club's currently going and we don't know what this problem is that adams keeps talking about he feels like it's not his place to say ryan sparks has stayed very quiet on it and it, it the, the problem could potentially be stefan rupp but neither of them want to say it because they don't want to be sacked or so if that is the problem, then what can we actually do as fans? Because if Rook doesn't really care and he doesn't get the 10 million that he's well, allegedly asking for, then what the hell do we do? I could go on and on, but I'm not going to waste any more of your guys' time. So thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have enjoyed, a like as always will be massively appreciated. As I said at the start of the video, if we got it 60 likes on today's video, that would be absolutely class. Subscribe if you are new as well. Once again, thank you so much for 5,000 subscribers. We are now on the road to 6,000. I mean, if we hit 6,000 by the end of the season, that would be absolutely incredible. That's the new target. Let's try and hit 6K by May. 6K by May. That is absolutely fantastic. Let's try and do it. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, Subscribe, get your post notification bell on as well so you never miss a video of when I upload. Drop a comment in of your score predictions in down in the comments down below. I would be able uh, interested to hear some of your guys' thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the Stefan Rupp situation as well. Share the video around with your family and friends. Have a great rest of your day, and I shall see you all probably Saturday. I think I'm going to do a live stream of the game. We'll listen to it on the radio together. So make sure you tune in about half past two, quarter to uh, quarter three, sorry, something like that. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.